So given everything you've gone over, it sounds like you're on a paleo template with some modifications. Take me through what a typical day might look like, including when you break your overnight fast. I usually have coffee and cream in the morning, um, typically decaf at this point, water, Swiss water decaf, because I'm pretty caffeine sensitive. Um, and then it depends on the morning. Sometimes I Sometimes I don't have anything. Sometimes I fast, do intermittent fasting. My first meal is not until noon or even a little later. Uh, in that case, I will tend to have black coffee with no cream or no coffee at all, just water. Um, other times I'll have bacon and eggs and maybe sauerkraut or other fermented vegetables. Um, other times I'll have uh, a smoothie that generally would have like uh, collagen, raw egg yolks, maybe some nut butter, coconut milk, um, or sometimes fermented dairy. I don't can drink uh, like fluid milk, but I can I, I can do well with kefir and yogurt uh, and other fermented dairy products. Um, and then I might also have uh, you know, just a small amount of fruit, like some half a cup of berries or something like that. So, um, pretty, you know, low, low carbohydrate. Um, uh, and sometimes I like to have something like that. Um, lunch is often, uh, could be a salad depending on the time of year. If it's summer and it's warm out, it could be a salad of a big salad with, uh, some kind of protein like fit salmon or, fish or meat that's left over from the night before, or I might have leftovers, you know, very often we'll have leftovers, uh, from like we cook pretty much almost all of our meals. And so we'll often do, you know, big one pot meals in the instant pot or in a slow cooker, uh, and, and when we cook dinner and then make sure that we have enough for leftovers. And then dinner is usually anything, you know, there's almost always, some combination of an animal protein, a non-starchy vegetable, and some fermented vegetables typically, and then some kind of starch. And the starch could be a potato, could be a sweet potato, could be rice occasionally, um, could be uh, less commonly like taro or yuca. Um, one of, you know, these are starches from, from tr that are typically found in the tropics, but they're they can be a um, good source of carbohydrate uh, for people that tolerate them. They're a little more difficult to find. Um, but there's so many ways that you can make those starches interesting um, if you're familiar with how to cook them, and including potatoes and sweet potatoes, obviously, and, and rice. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what the basic day looks like. I don't tend to snack very often, um, it's pretty rare. Sometimes if I do, it will typically be nuts or seeds or something like that. Um, cheese, I will have occasionally um, with the snack, maybe with the nuts and seeds, I do pretty well with most hard cheeses. Um, I'm, I'm, I would say mildly lactose intolerant, so soft cheese, fluid milk, those sorts of things I don't eat very much of, but hard cheese, fermented dairy, cream, butter, those are all very low in lactose. So I don't uh, have any problem with them. And I feel great when I consume them. And I think there's a lot of health benefits associated with them. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Most recent research suggests that over 90% of Americans fall short of the optimal intake of not just one, but several micronutrients. This is also true in other developed countries around the world. So there definitely has been a